Hello darlings, welcome back to Dining Through the Decades. My name is Sage Lilliman and this is the final episode for season two and today we're going to be making a World War II cottage pie. This recipe is from a website called The 1940s Experiment by a lovely lady called Carolyn. I would definitely recommend going over to Carolyn's blog and checking out some of her wartime recipes. They are absolutely delicious, but for today we're going to be making a World War II cottage pie, so let's get into it. The first thing to make this cottage pie is we're going to brown our minced meat. We're just putting in our beef mince and turning the stove on. While the mince is in the pan browning, we're just going to finally chop up some carrot, onion and put in some frozen peas. And as I've mentioned in other videos before, we're not peeling the carrots, we're not wasting anything, we're using it all. Just going to add in a little bit more oil. So we're going to be adding in all of these vegetables after the mince is cooked and then we can move on to making a sauce. The recipe doesn't specify how many carrots so I think I'm just going to do two and I'll put this one aside. And don't forget to stir the mince. going to take this off the heat, that's all done, and then we can add in our chopped carrot, and then we're also going to add an onion in. Now I'm just going to dice up this onion, slicing lengthways, and then down and then across. I'm also adding in some peas. <gasps> and we've added in some peas as well to the carrot, onion, and mince. I forgot to mention at the beginning, but this meat that we had here, which is about 400 grams, only half of that was rationed per person each week. So you only had a very small amount of meat, so this would have been a bit of a treat for the family having something like this having a cottage pie, you would maybe have used some other sort of substitute, putting oats or lentils or some sort of legumes in here, but we're going to enjoy this delicious pie today with minced meat. Okay, we're gonna season this. We're gonna add a good amount of salt in here and pepper as well. And we're going to add some thyme and rosemary. And about a teaspoon of each. Put that back on the heat and we're going to add our beef stock now. Alright, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of this stock to two cups of water. Okay, we're just going to add the beef stock to our mix here and simmer that for 15 minutes. We are gonna peel the potatoes for the mash that's going on top of the cottage pie, but we're not gonna waste these peels. You can actually find a recipe for a potato peel pie on this lady's website as well. I've just taken this off the heat for the moment and we're going to quickly do the potatoes and then we'll add in our bisto, our gravy into the mix. I'm gonna chop up these potatoes and add them into the boiling water. I'm gonna make sure to salt it as well so we have a nice salty mashed potato. 
before I forget, I'm just gonna add in the salt. And to help the potatoes come to the boil, I'm just gonna put a lid on to keep that heat in there. I have some Bisto gravy here, which I believe is an English gravy. And we're going to add some of this to some cold water and then add that to our beef mixture. Bisto browns and seasons of pecans, all in one. Just adding a little bit more. We want this sauce to be nice and thick. We don't want it to be watery. So add in as much gravy as you want. It's thickening up now and it smells delicious. And we just have to wait for the potatoes to boil and then we can mash it up and put it in the oven. I've just had a try of this, it's absolutely delicious, but I do think I'm gonna add a little bit more gravy so that it's a bit more saucy. Saucy? Who behave? <laughs> <laughs> I've just added in this gravy and I'm gonna mix it through. Oh, it's so good. I'm so ready to eat this. Oh. It definitely needed that extra bit of gravy. All right, this mix is all done now. I've moved the mince mixture to the side now, and we just need to wait to let the potatoes boil. Okay, the potatoes are all boiled now. We're just gonna strain these in the sink. Now we're just gonna put them back in the pot so we can mash them in here. Gonna mash up these potatoes and add in a bit of butter as well. Okay, we're gonna add in a little bit of butter. Got some butter in there, and now we can add a splash of milk. Bit of milk in there, and then mix that together. And a little bit more milk. I am just gonna add a little bit of salt in, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of pepper in here. And then we're done, we can add them together now. Um, I've run out of paper towel, which I usually use, so I'm using a bit of baking paper. So we're just gonna grease our dish. And then put in our mixture. All right, we're gonna transfer our cottage pie mixture. Oh, I've already just spilt it. Okay. I'm going to transfer this all into our greased baking dish. We're just going to plop in the mixture and then add in our mashed potato. Alright, now we can add our fluffy mashed potato on top. Just going to grate the cheese and then we can top it on our cottage pie and put it in the oven. Sprinkling the cheese over the top. We're also going to add some more of our dry herbs, the rosemary and thyme. I'm going to put this in the oven now and I've already preheated it to 200 degrees Celsius. So this is going to go in the oven for 20 minutes. And while we wait for that to cook, let's go water the garden.
like the cottage pies done, let's take it out and have a look. Mm. It looks absolutely delicious. It smells so good. The whole house is filled with the smell of cottage pie. Um, I kept it in for an extra 15 minutes because I can't actually fit it in the grill that we have. The recipe says after putting it in the oven for 20 minutes to then transfer it to the grill, but because our grill is too narrow, we can't actually fit any sort of baking dish in there. I just kept it in for an extra 15 and it looks like it's golden up nicely. So let's cut into it and have a try. Alright, we have the delicious looking cottage pie here. It smells so good. Like, I just haven't been able to stop smelling it. I'm so ready to try this. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. This is so good. some out. That is so tasty. I'm going to have at least two more servings of this because I'm just going to just go through this so fast. Gravy, mince, peas, carrot, they're just a match made in heaven and even more of a dream when you add mashed potato on top. Yum. This is so good. I cannot recommend this recipe enough. You need to go make this right now. It's so good. Wow, like I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. This is one of the best meals I've had. This is just so, oh. I'm just gonna keep repeating myself, but it's so good. Thank you all so much for watching season two of Dining Through the Decades. It means the absolute world that all of you lovely darlings have stuck around for season two. And thank you to all of the people that recommended different recipes like the Lord Walton pie. I had a lot of fun making that one. And I'm so chuffed that you've all really enjoyed watching this show. And like always, the recipe is linked in the description box below. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Look at your judgy face. But then it. <laughs> That sounds like someone's going to the toilet really bad. <laughs>